Good day students, welcome to mathgotsort.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problem number 3 of the 2018 AP Calculus AB free response question focusing on um, the graph of G. Question 3 reads, the function G is defined on the closed interval negative 4 to 8. The graph of G consists of two linear pieces and a semicircle as shown in the figure below. Let f be the function defined by f of x equals 3x plus the integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. Part a, we have to find f of 7 and f prime of 7. Okay, so um, let's start with the first part. We're going to find um, f of 7 first, okay? <laughs> so... We need to identify what the function is. The function f of x is 3x plus the integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. To find what f of 7 is, all we're simply going to do is plug in 7 where all we have where we have um, x's in the function. So 3 input 7 there in place of um, x. Uh, plus the integral from 0 to what? So instead of x, we have a 7 over there. 0 to 7 of g of t dt. Okay. So let's go ahead and work it out. Um, 3 times 7 is 21. Now, the integral uh, from 0 to 7 of g of t dt has to be computed using the graph. Okay. So how do we find uh, a definite integral when you're given the graph? So let's uh, write down Navitz-Taylor real quick to help us remember. So when you have uh, I for integral, you can, and you're given a graph, you're basically going to use A, okay? So integral, volume, number, accumulate amounts they are integral so if you're looking for the integral graphically you're looking for the area what area you're looking for the area between the function and the x-axis okay and you need to remember that when the function is beneath the x-axis that integral will have a negative area value okay so let's go ahead and specify exactly what we're looking for here so we're going to add um the area of the we're going from one from zero we're integrating from zero to seven okay so let me show you on the graph what we're looking the area that we're looking for while i show you on the graph i'm going to deliberately make a mistake and the task here is can you identify what the mistake is and then we'll go over what uh what the correct um what the correct process is okay so to look for the integral from 0 to 7 of g of t dt, we're looking for the area right here. So since it's underneath the uh, x-axis, so this semicircle is region 1, and then this other area right here to the right, region 2, is the second uh, area that we're looking for. Okay, so that's the integral. Uh, from 0 to 7 of g of t dt. Now take a look at the area that we have. Do you see the mistake? This is a common mistake that most students make on the AP exam when they're using graphs to evaluate areas. Do you see the mistake? All right. The mistake is as follows. The integral is from 0 to 7. But the area that I have highlighted here is from 0 to what? To 8. Okay. So that's incorrect. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go halfway. All right, you're supposed to go from six for the rectangle. You're supposed to go from six to seven right here. Okay, so that's area, region number two. That's where you're looking for the area of. So this rectangle and this semicircle right here. So the bottom line is when you're using graphs to find integrals, play, pay close attention to the upper and lower limits because a lot of times um, you might stop halfway within the region 
um, just because that's how the problem is. So pay close attention to that. Okay. All right. So for this problem, the integral is going to be the area of the semicircle plus the area of the rectangle. Okay, so we're going to use geometry here. Since these are geometric shapes, we don't need a function to find the exact area. To find the area of a semicircle, we just find the area of a circle, pi r square, and divide it by 2. To find the area of a of the rectangle, uh, is this based on sight? Okay, so let's go ahead and figure it out. So we're going to have 21 plus... Well, the area of the semicircle, we're going to use pi r square over 2, the radius. What's the radius here? We're going from here to here. You can clearly see that the diameter is 6, right? So if the diameter is 6, then the radius is going to be 3. I'll just count 1, 2, 3. So the radius is 3, so it's going to be... So since this is negative, uh, we'll just put a negative in there, okay? Negative pi times radius square over 2. And then we add on the area of the rectangle, which is base times height. So the base is 1 times the height, which is 3. Okay? And then let's use order of operations to finish this off. We have 21 minus 9 pi over 2 plus 3, which equals 24 minus 9 pi over 2. So that is the answer to question number 3A, the first part. Okay, now let's do the second part of number uh, 3. I just it's like you have a 2 for 1 here. So we're looking for, we want to find um, the derivative of f at 7. All right, so... When you're looking for the derivative at a particular point, it's the same thing as the slope of the tangent line, is a two for one deal. Okay, there are two parts in it. So uh, remember when you're looking for the derivative at a point or the SOT, slope of the tangent line, you do your calculus first before your algebra, okay? So we're gonna, for part one, we're gonna find. Um, the derivative at any x value and then after doing that we're going to evaluate the derivative at uh, the specified value namely 7 all right let's do it part 1 let's find f prime of x so f of x we know it's 3x plus the integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. So to differentiate this, f prime of x, I'm going to use 10 by term differentiation, is going to be the derivative of 3x plus the derivative of the integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. Okay? All right, so... Uh, to find the derivative of 3x, we use our typical differentiation rules for that. Derivative of 3x is just 3. Uh, and then this is FTC2, level 1. We're just going to hidden peel build this problem real quick. So um, plug in the upper into the function times the derivative of the upper, which is just 1. You don't waste your time with the lower because when you plug it in and find this derivative is zero and that, that's gone. All right, so that's going to be g of x. Excellent. Now we have part one done. Now we're going to move to the um, algebra part. We're done with the calculus step, okay? So for the algebra part, we're going to evaluate the derivative at 7. Okay, so f prime of 7 is going to be 3 plus g of 7. So that's going to be 3 plus, now g of 7 is the output when um, x is 7. So we go back to the function g and we can clearly see that um, when the input is 7, 
our output is three, okay? So that was just an input output scenario, basic algebra graph reading there. All right, so it's three plus three, and that's six. So the answer for the second part of uh, part 3a is six. All right, so how was this graded on the AP exam? Uh, the, this is a two point problem. You get one point for the first part of number one, and then you get another one point for the second part of number one for a total of two points. All right, 3B, it says find the value of X in the cool's interval negative four to three at which F attains its maximum value. Justify your answer. All right, so how do we know how to find the maximum um, of a function? So let's go ahead and write down the process for finding the maximum of a function. All right, so before we start that, let's review our fun charts real quick. All right, so let's see what we have here. Increasing, decreasing. All right, so when we're looking for extrema, we're looking for where it goes from max, increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. For maximum scenario, we're looking for where F goes from increasing to decreasing. Okay, so um, f has a maximum when the function itself changes from increasing to decreasing, or if you have the derivative, is where the derivative changes from positive to negative at an interior point. At an end point, f prime should be positive to the left or negative to the right, which indicates ascending to an end point or descending from an end point, which also qualifies it to be um, a maximum. Okay, all right, so that's our, our local max going in that direction. The reverse direction is local min. So formula is as follows, f max, f max occurs at an interior point where, where what happens, where f prime changes where f prime changes from what to what? Changes from positive to negative, okay? Uh, increasing to decreasing. That's for an interior point. How about end points? Or f prime is positive to the left, to a left end point. to a left positive to a, sorry, right end point, to a right end point. Or negative to a left end point. Okay. So let's, let, let me just show you what the three scenarios we're talking about is. So in this particular case, F goes from positive, F prime goes from positive to negative. So it's just something like this that goes to the extrema right here. You see, as you can see, it's an interior, okay? F prime is positive to a right endpoint means that you just ascend into an endpoint. That makes it a local max, all right? F prime is negative to a left endpoint. So F prime is positive here. Negative to a left endpoint means you have a left endpoint and you descend downwards in this direction. So this is a local max also. So there goes your uh, three cases that we need to consider. Okay. All right. Now, if you have an open interval um, and you're looking for the local extrema, you do not need to consider the endpoints since they are not defined on the domain. But in this particular problem, it's a closed interval. So we have to consider negative four and three. Alrighty. So Let's get started. How do we know where the sign change happens? To know where the sign change happens or where it's undefined, where f prime is undefined, we have to find the critical values, all right? Um, and then the critical values will help us to create our sign chart. So remember when you're looking for your um, 
to find L max, to find R max, or R max, or R min, you use CVS, critical values, endpoint, and sign chart. Um, for the local, um, you use uh, critical values, endpoint, and sign chart. But for the extreme, you have to do a check. In this particular case, we are, we're not going to do a check, okay? All right. Um, there's no indication of absolute extrema here. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll do the C step. We're going to find the critical values first. So let's find the critical values. What are the critical values? Again, the critical values are basically the points where F prime is equal to zero or F prime does not exist. Okay. All right. Uh, so in this particular case, we're going to uh, look at the function. We have F of X is equal to three X plus the integral from zero to X of G of T D T. Ooh, for G of X, G of T D T. Now what's F prime? We already did this before, right? So it should be easy. F prime of X, um, differentiate this, you get three. You use FTC two on this one right here, you get G of X. Okay. So we need to find where it's equal to zero or does not exist. So for F prime equal to zero, we'll just simply take what we have here and set it equal to zero and solve. Okay. Um, so subtract three from both our sides. So g of x is equal to negative three. Uh, is equal to negative three. Okay, so for this particular equation to solve this, I just grabbed the graph here. Uh, we're looking for what x value gives us an output value of negative three on the graph. So we have negative three right here. Oh boy, let's do it again. So we have negative three right here. So what x value gives you that output? Trace it to the curve and voila, there you go. So at x equals three, the function is negative three. So the solution to this equation is x equals negative three. All right. So where is f prime equals d and e on the interval negative four to three? From negative four to three, this function, um, uh, g of x is defined, okay? Um, so if g of x is defined, it automatically follows that three plus g of x is defined. So there isn't any place here where um, uh, f prime does not exist, okay? So you might say, oh, wait a minute, how about here? We have a corner here. Uh, at this particular point, g is defined, but g prime, which is the second derivative of f, is undefined, okay? So remember, f prime is related to g, not g prime. So f prime is um, defined for this entire scenario because f prime is three plus g. But at this particular point, g prime is undefined, not f prime. So we don't look at that, okay? All right, so there we go. We have um, exactly one critical point. So we're, we're gonna now, we've done the CV step of CVS. Now we're going to make our sign chart using the endpoints. So let's make our sign chart right here. Okay, so this is a closed interval from negative uh, four all the way to three. Let's close that. So we have, this is nice. We just have only one interval to test. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the um, sine of f prime Okay, the sine of f prime to tell us about the behavior of f Behavior of f Okay, because we're looking for the um, maximum of f on this interval Okay, so we're gonna pick a test value here from negative four to three was an easy number to work with. Oh, how about we just use zero? Okay, that's convenient. 
So we're going to look for f prime of 0. f prime of 0 is going to be, remember what f prime is, right? f prime of x is 3 plus g of x. So f prime of 0, just plug in 0 into the derivative. So it's going to be 3 plus g of 0. Okay, so if you look at the graph here, you can see that g of 0 is 0. So that's going to be 3 plus 0. What we care about is just the sign. We don't even have to do the entire work. So bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, this is positive. On this one interval is positive. So if f is if f prime is positive, what is the function doing? Let's go back to our sign chart, to our fun chart over here. If the function is, if the derivative is positive, that tells you that the function is increasing. Okay, so on this interval that we have right here, f is increasing. What does that tell us? Well, in the interior, there are no extremas, okay? So now we just have to look at the endpoints. Which of these is the maximum? Is it negative four or three? We can clearly see that three is gonna be the maximum because from negative four, the function just takes off. It keeps increasing all the way to three. All right, so this guy right here, negative four is a uh, um, a local as a local minimum or relative minimum and then over here this is a local maximum or relative max okay all right but in, the, in this graph we know automatically if we use um, the extreme value theorem that this is the absolute minimum and this is the absolute maximum since there are no uh, extreme as in, in the interior. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down our answer with the justification. So this is what we're looking for right here. So since f of x um, increases um, to the, so you're ascending to an endpoint, increases to the right endpoint at x equals 3, guess what? There is a, uh, a a maximum there. That was the only maximum that we have. So the answer to number, uh, what number is this? Number 3b is 3. We have a local maximum at x equals 3. All right, so how is this graded on the AP exam? This particular problem is a uh, two-pointer. You just get two points for the answer with justification, okay? So if you just say x equals three, you get one point. And then when you put the justification here, because f is increasing over here, then you get another uh, point, and you have a total of two points. All right, so oh, one quick thing I forgot to say in the justification, uh, we have to say why f is increasing. So just put because, how do we know that f is increasing? Because the derivative f prime of x is positive, very important. All right, that's how we know that f is increasing. All right, let's take a look at 3c. In question number 3c, we're gonna be looking at how to find uh, one-sided derivative, okay? So whenever you're looking for the derivative of a function, in most cases, the direction is not specified. So what you're looking at is a double-sided derivative. In this particular case, we're gonna be looking at a scenario, uh, two scenarios where the directions are specified, okay? So question 3C reads, for each, um, for each of the limit as x approaches zero from the left of g prime of x, and limit as x approaches zero from the right of g prime of x, find the value or state that it does not exist. Okay, so what on earth are these things right here? Uh, these are the derivatives from the left and right. So let's specify exactly what they are. So um, the limit as x approaches zero from the left of g prime of x Another way uh, to write this is g prime of zero from the left, okay? All right, and another way to write this, it can also be written using the um, limit notation, okay? Uh, your symmetric difference notation. This can also be written as a limit 
as h approaches zero from the left of f of um oh you know what let's do this let's use let's be general generic here so let's use a let's say you're approaching an a okay so right here all right so limit as h approaches uh zero from the left of f of um f of a plus h minus f of a over h ladies and gentlemen this is known as the left sided derivative okay or let's yeah left sided or let's see left hand okay left hand or left side it doesn't really matter so let's call it the left hand derivative all right derivative from the left so let's say you have an a value right here if you're approaching it from the left um, that's a from the left so this is a left hand derivative we're going to call it at lhd okay and then from the on the flip side the limit as x approaches a from the right of g prime of uh, x which is the same thing as g prime of a from the right if you you can write these two using limit notation uh, limit as h approaches zero from the right of f of a plus h minus f of a over h now what is this one this is the right hand derivative okay so when you're thinking about differentiability and you're thinking about the corner cost vertical tangent or discontinuity uh, what you're basically doing is you're comparing your LHD and your RHD, okay? So your left-hand derivative and right-hand derivative are, diff are different for a function that's continuous, so basis for differentiability, then the derivative does not exist at that point, all right? So that's why derivative fails, because remember, all derivatives are limits by definition, all right? So this is RHD from the right, and then this is LHD from the left. Now, we are ready to do the problem. So let's get started. Uh, the first one, we're looking for the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of g prime of x. What on earth is this? Is this the left or the right hand derivative relative to 0? Since you're approaching from a negative side right here, 0 negative, that's the left hand derivative. Alrighty. So um, the left-hand derivative, let's specify what that is. So left, we're looking for the left-hand derivative to um, no, at, at uh, what? At x equals 0. Okay? So we're given a graph. Now, the left-hand side is a linear function. How do you find the derivative using the graph? Okay, so let's, let's call up Navit Stiller again, just to help us remember how to do it. So um, let's write that again. So when you're looking for the derivative, graphically is the slope of the tangent line, okay? And if it's a straight line, your line is your tangent line bottom line so what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to simply use our elementary algebra formula for calculating slope to find the derivative here because if you have a straight line you don't need calculus to find the derivative just use rise over run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so let's see if we do our slope triangle here from here it doesn't matter what intervals i'm just picking two lattice points on this line so you rise oh I could have done this one right here hmm, let me do that one that's nicer you rise um, negative one you fall negative one and you run two so you rise negative one over two and that ladies and gentlemen is your um, left hand derivative okay all right so let's let's box it and write it pretty g prime oh, limit as x approaches 0 from the left of g prime of x is equal to negative 1 over 2. 
All right, now let's take a look at the right-hand derivative relative to x equals zero. So in that case, we're looking for the limit. We're looking for the limit as uh, x approaches zero from the right of g prime of x, okay? So this one right here, so we're going from the right now to zero, zero from the right. So that is a right-hand derivative because you're in the right hand of zero. So let's write it down. So this is a right-hand derivative uh, at x equals zero. Okay. So now we have a curve. Okay. But this is a semicircle. It's not too strange. What is the tangent line um, at the at this point on a semicircle? What's the tangent line? What does it look like? Well, the tangent line looks just like this. Let me sketch it for you. So um, let me show you multiple tangent lines. So you have a tangent line right here, okay? Right here, the tangent line is zero. You see that? So when you start approaching here, this point right here is negative. Right here at this point, negative. It's becoming more and more negative. What's happening at this particular point is you're approaching a vertical tangent line all right so when you get to zero x equals zero what you have ladies and gentlemen is a vertical tangent line okay you don't really get there you're getting arbitrarily close to that slope so what is the slope of a vertical line that is exactly what we're looking for all right so this is approaching remember it's a limit so it's approaching the slope of a vertical line slope of a vertical line remember when you're finding the limit you don't have to get to the point the whole idea of a limit is what is a function approaching okay so at this particular place what is the slope approaching this the so slope of this line from the right is approaching the slope of a vertical line so what is the slope of a vertical line all right, so that's what the answer is going to be, okay? So let's just put in an intermediate step here. So the approach that we're using from Navid Stiller is we're looking for the slope of a tan line, slope of the tan line. And in this case, the tan line is a vertical line. So we're looking for the slope of a vertical line. And the slope of a vertical line, ladies and gentlemen, is undefined. Okay, it's undefined, or you can just say does not exist. In this particular problem, we were asked to write does not exist. So that's the notation that we're going to use. Alrighty, so that's basically how you find one-sided limits when you're given the graph of the function. All right, so let's take a look at the last one, part D. Okay, so part D, we're looking for limits right here. So we also find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x plus 7 over e to the 3x plus 6 minus 1. Let's do it. So here's a finite limit. So if we're looking for finite limits, we're going to be using Sally to help us out. Uh, substitute first. Um, if you have a defined answer, then yay. But if you have um, undefined answer, an undefined answer that uh, the limit does not exist, and uh, if you have an indeterminate form, we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule to basically figure it out. Okay, let's do it. So let's do substitution first. So the limit as x approaches negative two um, of f of x plus seven over uh, e to the three x plus six minus one so we just substitute, okay? When we substitute, we're going to have um, f of negative 2 plus 7 divided by um, e to the... So for x, we're going to put negative 2, okay? So that's going to make it negative 6 plus 6 minus 1, okay? Let's work that out. So that's going to become... Um, so we know what f of, you remember what f of x is, right? Let's put it up here. So f of x is 3x plus, 
the integral from 0 to 7 of g of t dt and we have g of x here depicted by the graph okay so we're going to use that to find f of negative 2 so f of negative 2 is going to be um, 3 times negative 2 plus the integral from 0 to negative 2 of um, g of t dt plus 7 and that's this entire thing divided by so e to the negative x minus x is e to the I mean negative 6 plus 6 is e to the 0 minus 1 okay all right so let's keep on going so we have negative 6 here negative 6 plus the integral from 0 to negative 2 of g of t dt to use a graph to find an integral we already talked about this before is the area between the graph and the x-axis okay so from 0 to negative 2 okay careful here now you notice that the limits are in reverse order okay so we have to fix that you have to pay attention to your limits it has to be in ascending order so we're going to switch the limits so when we switch the limits guess what's going to happen if we switch it to the integral from decreasing to increasing smaller to bigger the sign changes to negative okay so this becomes minus so please pay attention to that minus g of t dt plus 7 I should have combined it in negative 6 and the 7 I don't know why I didn't combine it okay all right so we have that over I use a ruler here because it's kind of long over um, e to the 0 is 1 1 minus 1 okay okay now so negative 6 plus 7 is 1 minus now from negative 2 to 0 we're just looking for this area right here right so just have base times height it so I have uh, base times height here is 2 times 1 so half of that so half of 2 times 1 over 1 I'm, I'm sorry over 0 so we have what do we have um, so this is just 1 1 minus 1 over 0 0 over 0 okay so what is this is this undefined or indeterminate ladies and gentlemen this is in determinate it means you cannot know what the limit is that's what indeterminate means do not confuse this with undefined okay when you have a non-zero number non-zero number over zero that is what um, that is what undefined is okay but we have zero over zero is indeterminate so this is indeterminate so guess what if you have indeterminate we can use L'Hopital's rule to do it or algebraic manipulation which we're not going to try and do right now I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule that's the best way for the AP exam when you're dealing with um, limits of indeterminate form okay so what does that mean so to use L'Hopital's rule what we're just going to do is differentiate the numerator and the denominator and take the limit again so let's write exactly what our game plan is we're going to use L'Hopital's rule okay so we're going to have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator okay all right so when we differentiate we're going to have the derivative of the top so we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 the derivative of the top is just the derivative of f which is f prime of x the derivative mm -mm, I put f prime of 7 f prime of x and then the derivative of 7 uh, is a constant so the rate of change of a constant is 0 so that's gone so it's f prime of x on the top and then in the denominator differentiate both of them if you differentiate e to the 3x plus 6 you use the chain rule okay derivative of the outer is e to the x or e to the u 
okay evaluated at the inner times the derivative of the inner the derivative of 3x plus 6 is just 3 all right so that's the derivative okay what's the derivative of negative 1 the derivative of 1 is 0 because it's a constant so there um, there it is right there now what we're gonna do now is evaluate substitute again since it's a finite limit so this is going to be equal to f uh, f prime of negative 2 divided by um, 3 times e to the if we plug in um, negative 2 here is going to be negative 6 negative 6 plus 6 okay so it's going to be f prime of negative 2 over 3 e to the 0 okay and we can clearly see that um, that portion right there is going to be 1 the e to the 0 is going to be 1 so it's going to be f prime of uh, negative 2 over 3 okay so this f prime of negative 2 let's figure out what that is so let's find f prime of negative 2 so this is a, an SOT problem again, slope of a tangent line or derivative at a point. There's a two and one. So first of all, we're gonna find the derivative, okay? Like we did in the first part. And then uh, we're gonna evaluate the derivative. You do your calculus before algebra, okay? Evaluate it at negative two. Okay, so let's do it. First things first, let's find the derivative, part one. So um, we know that f of x is 3x plus the integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. So what is f prime? f prime of x is going to be, we did this before, so you should know what it is. Derivative of 3x is 3 plus the derivative of this integral where the upper limit is a function is going to be g of x okay so that's part one and then part two we're going to evaluate f prime of negative two um, is going to be what three plus g of negative two okay so we're going to have three plus to define g of negative two you're going to use a graph okay so if you look at the graph, you can clearly see that g of negative 2 is 1. Just trace it. So g of negative 2 is 1. So times 1. Right there. And that's equal to 4. All right. So where are we? Hopefully you didn't get lost in our work. We're trying to find what is f prime of negative 2 over 3. So we know what f prime of negative 2 is. So we just plug it in. Okay. So f prime of negative 2 over 3 is equal to uh, 4, what we just did, over 3. Okay? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, that is the final answer for question number 3D. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the calculus the AP Calculus exam to give us a like. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We upload math tutorials to our page on a regular basis. If you have any questions about what we just covered or any calculus questions in general, just post it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to respond. More support tools can be found at mathgutserve.com. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.